Hello everyone, Carlos here from the Chatsasek research team. So today I want to talk to you about a new version of Sysmon that recently came out, version 13. This new version of Sysmon actually allows us to detect any of the techniques of process hollowing, in addition to process herpetherpy uh, that are executed by attackers. Now, process hollowing is a very well-known technique that is used by many tools out there. Among them, Cobalt Strike. Anytime you decide to execute a binary uh, inside of Cobalt Strike and it gets uploaded, Cobalt Strike actually launches the executable or any other image that you specify and it will actually use process hollowing to inject that image and run that in that environment. So it's a very well known technique. It's a, a technique that is uh, abused quite a bit. So Microsoft, specifically Mark Dustinovich, added support for this. Now this is very important and Right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover for you how you can configure, capture these events, how to use tools like PS Gumshoe and the Visual Studio Code for Sysmon. And I think you're really going to like this. So let's get to it. Okay, let's take a look at the new process tampering events in Sysmon version 13. First things, I'm gonna check what version of Sysmon do I have on this system. I can quickly check that just by running sysmon without any parameters. And I can see that I'm running version 13.01. I can even look at the schema to know what are the different components of each one of the events. And we are interested in process tampering. So we can look at that just by doing sysmon and then passing the S parameter. As we can see, the entire schema is printed out. And here we can see sysmon process image tampering, we can see that it is uh, event ID number 25. We see that we have several fields here of those. That we have the process GUID, the process ID, the image of the process that was tampered, and type, what type of tampering is happening. In fact, let's do something. Let's clear the event log for Sysmon. I'm going to use PS to clear win event do that. First, we need to find out what is the Sysmon event and what is its name. A quick way of doing this is we can do get win event. List log asterisk Sysmon asterisk. And here we see Microsoft Windows Sysmon operational. PS Gumshoe was already installed on this machine using the install module command to install it from the PowerShell gallery. I would really like it if you guys install that module. I think it's very useful and it's something that I do in my spare time and contribute to the community. So I really hope that you like it. So let's do clear one event. Uh, let's give it the log name. Make sure we have no other events here. Oh, forgot. Let's right-click to uh, copy on the new terminal. Operational. Now, if we take a look again, we see that the record count is zero. Cool. So let's create a configuration. So I'm going here into Visual Studio Code. I have the Sysmon extension installed, version 1.3. This is the version of the Sysmon extension that actually includes the information so you can, or the snippet, so you can actually create a configuration for process tampering. So let's go here and create a Sysmon config. In fact, let me save this first as process temper dot SMC, which is the extension for uh, the file extension for the Visual Studio extension that I made. Now, if I go Sysmon config, you'd see that we get the IntelliSense for it. Sysmon config, we need this to be schema version 4.5. I like using chat 256. And then I'm going to create here a rule group, control I, and rule group. And I'm going to call this process tamper. I'm going to make the relationship an or. 
Then I'm going to do control I again, process tampering. I'm going to make it an exclude. Now, since none of the rules will match, they will all be then included. This is the way that Sysmon kind of works. So let me save this and let me apply it. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that you need to be administrator in your prompt to be able to alter the Sysmon configuration. So I'm going to do Sysmon with the C parameter. Then let's add process temper. SMC and applied. Now let's take a look at the configuration itself. So we just execute minus C without any parameters. We can see our rule here that it applied. Let's clear this. Now let's run some sample programs that I have over here in my desktop. So let's run process hollowing. It worked. It hollowed the file, the image, and let's see if it generated an event. So I'm going to use PSCOM shoe again here. And I'm going to do get sysmon uh, process tampering. And here are all of the sysmon process tampering event. So here we have a couple of false positives, specifically around Git. Let's look for the hollow one. Here we go. So this process actually starts a new version of SVC host, and it replaces the image. So here we can see that the event actually triggered and that it worked. Now, if we look for this event, so let's see, process it. Here's the good. Process activity events. I want all of the events that use this process good. And here we can see parent image is process hollowing. And it created SVC host. So here we can see that event. In addition to that, we can see the process tempering one. And we can see when it actually the process terminated. So I have all of the information here on that process using the get sysmon process activity event. Now, one thing to keep in mind, um, there are ways around it. We were looking at this at work at TrustSec, and one of the things that we found is that we were able to find a bypass just by looking at how sysmon is working and how it was implemented. So here I have another hollowing program. I'm going to run this. It was able to hollow and inject the payload. Not inject, but actually replace the image and put another image in. And now if I go again to process hollowing, to get process tampering, I'm going to output this to out grid view so it's easier to see. Going here, we can see that we have our false positives for Git, but we don't have another one for SVC host. We were able to do process hollowing and replace the image. Now, when I bring this up, it is not that I want to say that it doesn't work. It's not valid. What I'm saying is that you should have other mitigating rule sets to be able to detect behavior. This is why it's so important to have process access actually configured in your system. This is why it's also proper to also have create remote thread. Uh, even though we didn't use it, use it that here, it may be used for other post exploitation actions after this. And I just wanted to kind of show this It's not uh, me throwing Sysman under the bus, but 
any attacker that has a certain level of skill set that is able to reverse engineer the logic that is going to be able to find bypasses to this. Now, this raises the bar quite a bit because tools like, for example, currently Cabal Strike is going to get caught. Other tools that are out there that also use process hollowing that are going by the original example that was provided out there and the sample code that everybody's able to see is going to be detected and caught. So what we're doing is that we're raising the cost for the attacker. Now, I really hope that you guys like this. I hope that you find the information useful and I really invite you to go over to uh, our GitHub for TrustSec and look at the Sysmon Community Guide where we have documented all of this stuff for you to make your life a lot easier. Now, if you want, you can go over into the releases and we have updated the release of the Sysmon Guide where we included the information for process tampering in addition to provide more information um, around the change log of the Sysmon, different Sysmon versions. So if I open the PDF, I can download that. You can bring this into your ebook reader if you want. And we can go into the process tampering event. And here you can see process tampering. I go over it. Uh, it also catches process herpederping. I cover the fields, the initial rule here that finds everything. And here I have another rule group of known exclusions that you can use, or you can actually build your own. That is very easy. For example, if I'm running this on a system, so let me clear this up. Again, the event lock. I'm going to clear it. I'm going to open again edge I'm going to open a new copy of VS code uh, let's see what else we can do this to trigger I think I have Chrome here ah, I don't have it installed well most browsers are actually also generate false positives. So if I go over here and I'm getting all of the events for Sysmon process tampering, I have here all of those false positives of MSH, Visual Studio Code. Um, I should also have Git inside of Visual Studio Code that I'm using that creates all of those false positives. One way I can create a quick rule set for this is just to do get those events, select object property image and I want it to be unique that list and then I'm going to say new sysmon or convert to sorry convert to Sysmon rule, which is also part of PS Gumshoe. And this will give me that rule set of exclusions that I can quickly go and add into that rule group so I can minimize the amount of noise that I'm getting into my logs. Again, I really hope that you like this. Uh, I put quite a bit of work into the guide also on the PS Gumshoe and the Visual Studio Code extension. So remember to thank our good friends at TrustedSec. Uh, again, thank you. My name is Carlos Perez. I'm the lead for the research team at TrustedSec. And I hope that you really enjoy and find this information useful. Thank you.